Hello, and welcome back to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lafredo, and today we are continuing on with the Missing Linked Parts series of videos. In fact, we're actually looking at extracted parts today, which is somewhat related to linked parts, but which is not really linked parts at all. In fact, it's kind of the opposite of linked parts, but we're going to talk about it because they are somewhat related anyway. So the idea behind extracted parts is that you're not putting the uh, the part formats within the same file, like with linked parts. In this file, you can see I have all of my linked parts that are available to just switch over to within the uh, same file. With extracted parts, what you're doing is literally creating separate files for each score layout. So uh, it is a completely different thing. It does have its uh, advantages and disadvantages, which I'm going to talk about later in the video. Um, and actually, this was the old way that we used to have to deal with uh, parts in Finale. The linked parts system uh, didn't come along until, I want to say, about 10 years ago or so. Previous to that, we always had to extract our parts into individual files, and we can still do that in the present version of Finale. And the way to do that is go to the File menu and look for the Extract Parts option here, and when we check that, we get to this Extract Parts window. Now this is somewhat easy to understand, but I'll just kind of walk you through it. The top part of it is telling you which parts you want to extract, so you can check all and uncheck a few. You obviously probably never want to extract the score from the score file, because that wouldn't make any sense, but um, it gives you that option anyway. You can check none and select a few that you want to extract. Um, or if you're viewing a part within the file, you can actually check current, and it will uh, check just that current uh, part that you're viewing. We also have this Manage Parts button, and this will pull up the Manage Parts for the linked parts, which is interesting. And this is where the linked parts and the extracted parts sort of uh, fuse together in an in a interesting way. Essentially, the way that these parts are defined in the Manage Parts window for the linked parts is also how they will be extracted. So if you have your Flute 1 linked part with your Flute 1 staff, it will extract like that. You could, Of course, you could have custom linked parts with custom uh, staffs and everything, and that's how the parts will extract. And this includes all of the part creation preferences. Again, it all applies uh, once you have the linked part uh, generated, um, it ignores all this, these part creation preferences. You might think that you could actually go back in here to the part creation preferences, change these around, and get different settings for the extracted parts. It doesn't work like that. Once the parts have been generated, the extracted parts will use the definitions as defined within these linked parts to extract those parts, if that makes sense. In addition, the part names will also be part of the extraction, so it is important that your uh, parts over here in this column are named correctly in, uh, to, to, get this, to get the files to extract correctly. Now, if you didn't have any linked parts, this Generate Parts button would also be available to you, and it basically does the same thing over here in the Manage Parts window. It's just uh, generating all of the uh, linked parts for you. And then I'm going to skip the middle for now. I'm going to come back to that. We're going to look at the Save In option. And this is literally going to tell us, let us choose where on our computer we want to save these files. So I have a folder that I created on my desktop called Extracted Parts, and I'm going to use that. And now when I um, extract all of these parts, those files will end up in that folder. We also have the option to open those extracted parts once this process is finished, which you know, you can do, but if you have a lot of parts, you're going to open 15, 20 files all at once, which might be kind of a pain in the neck. So if I were to do this, I'd probably leave that unchecked. And then let's look at this middle section. This is where we're going to be dealing with the naming of these files, right? So by default, it's going to put the name of the original file, which is this long thing that I have typed here, plus a token here, which is represented by percentage sign P. And you can see in this list right below that there are several tokens that you can use for generating these names. And the percentage sign P1 is this third one called the part name. Again, that's related to the manage parts window, that left column, whatever the part names are over here. Those are the, the names that are going to be used for this uh, percentage sign P token. Now, we don't have to use this title. We could actually just type anything that we want here, or we could edit this. If I didn't want to see the numbers at the beginning, I could do it like that. Or, interestingly, we could just use the first token here, which is percentage sign F, um, which would do the same thing. It's just the, the score file name. I would get the same result. Um, maybe a little bit more useful is the score title from the file info, in which case that's percentage sign T. 
And in this particular file, I can tell you that the uh, title from the file info is just this first text here, the missing linked parts. So when I use this token, that's what's going to be replaced with that token. And uh, we talked about the part name. And then we have the other ones here, first staff name, first abbreviated staff name, uh, staff number, and staff index. So instead of the part name, you could use the staff name if you wanted to. So instead of percentage sign P, if you were to use S, you could use the uh, full staff name uh, in the score. Now you know that your parts can actually be named differently than the staff, so this may or may not be useful. And you can actually use the abbreviated staff name if you'd prefer, which is the A, percentage sign A. Uh, I think probably the part name is the most useful uh, version of this. And then I'm going to talk about this, the last two options here in a second, but let me just uh, generate the parts using this particular setup. And incidentally, you can choose to, the prompt for each name, but this is kind of a pain because it will literally ask you every time it creates a file what you want to name it. So you'd have to retype everything. So um, if that's what you need to do, you can use that. But Generally speaking, I think the generate names from is a much more uh, better way to do this. And so I have this set up uh, percentage sign T, score title from file info, uh, dash P, part name, and we'll see what we get. And you click OK, and this usually takes a second or two to actually process. And when it's done, you go to your desktop, and I have this folder here, and you should get all of these parts. Now, you notice one thing about this is that your computer is always going to list uh, these parts alphabetically, which is not always this, this score order. You can see bassoon is first, cello, clarinet, double bass, flute. Uh, this is not score order whatsoever. So sometimes this isn't the most useful way to do this. So I'm just going to delete these so we can start over. Let's go back here and do extract parts. And instead of uh, just doing percentage sign T at the beginning, I'm actually going to put something else before that. And we have two things at the bottom that can help us uh, put these in order. First, there's the first staff number and the first staff index. Now, the staff number in Finale can get a little bit confusing because of the way that Finale defines default staff numbers. It's kind of weird, but like if you add a staff and then delete it later, it still retains that number. So a lot of times if your files have been manipulated a whole bunch, you can end up with a lot of skips in the staff number. So even though you only have 12 staffs here, you could have staff number 1, 2, 3, 7, 8, 9, 12, 13, 14. So it wouldn't actually use you know, sequential numbers uh, exactly correctly all the time. So sometimes the staff number is not the most useful thing. I find the first staff index number to be a lot more useful, which is percentage sign N. And the first staff index will actually number the staffs uh, based on the score manager, which will be in the correct order uh, compared to the score. Um, the only caveat is that what it means by first is that occasionally a part will have more than one staff in it, right? Like a piano part is one group, but it's it has two staffs, right? So the staff index number, um, if you have a piano part in your score, you will get a skip because if you know if you go uh, number eight, nine, and number ten, staff number ten is the right hand of the piano, which means that staff number eleven is the left hand of the piano, but you're not creating a part for the left hand. So your numbering scheme is going to go 8, 9, 10, 12, 13, 14, etc. Um, it's a little bit more reliable than the staff number. I kind of wish there was a token for the part number, which would literally count the number uh, in the manage parts window, but we don't get that. So this is the, the next best thing, the first staff index. And of course, we do want to make sure we're saving in the appropriate place uh, in extracted parts. All that's good to go. And so now I have the first staff number index uh, title from the file info and then the part name. And we'll see what happens here. And we click OK. And it usually takes a second. And then we can go back into that folder and see what's there. And now we have these numbers at the beginning, which will help put the whole uh, filing system in order. So now it's in score order. Flutes, bassoons, horns, clarinet, uh, which I had put in the middle there, violin and the strings and all that stuff. Now it's in the appropriate order. So this is much more useful. It does use a three digit number, which, you know, it is what it is, but it's, uh, you know, everything's in order. And then so let's take a look at one of these parts. And literally this will look like Basically, it looks like the extracted part or the linked part from the regular file. If I were to actually go to the flute one part in the uh, regular score file, it kind of looks 
pretty much the same, you know, again, because it's generating uh, from the same method. So it is going to be looking the same, right? There's a, a couple things to know that's going on here. So let's look at the original file, we'll look at the score. We know that we have page formats for the score and for the parts. So when you extract the parts, essentially what Finale is going to do is it's going to take the settings from the page format for parts, however you have this set up, right? And it's essentially going to transfer that to the page format for the score in the extracted parts. Because now, if you think about it, this flute one part is actually quote unquote the score in this particular file. So it will actually copy over the uh, part page format into the score page format into the extracted file, which is what you'd want to happen. And obviously, you know, with these extracted parts, there are no linked parts, right? That doesn't make sense. There's just a single staff within this file and it is quote unquote the score. Now, there is an obvious disadvantage to extracting parts. And if you haven't figured this out by now, then you should probably go back and start at the beginning of the missing linked parts videos. But the obvious disadvantage is that now they are unlinked. And so any changes that you make to your flute part in your score file will not be made in the extracted flute file, right? So you'd have to make your um, changes twice it's a huge disadvantage and obviously the whole reasoning behind the linked part system is to avoid this problem because as you can imagine when you have all of these parts uh, in separate files it can become very uh, dangerous very quickly when you're making edits to you know just keep track of okay I made an edit in the bassoon 2 part in the score so now I got to open this file and make sure I make the same exact edits to the bassoon 2 part right it's really tedious and it's prone to errors all over the place. So it's not ideal 99% of the time, right? But there are some very, very specific advantages to extracting parts over linked parts. The first is that with these extracted parts, you can literally make any change that you can possibly think of in this extracted part that you couldn't do if the parts were linked. You could even literally change notes in a measure, which you couldn't do between a linked score and part, right? If you change the, the note in the score, it changes in the, in the linked part. Now, again, a lot of these things you have to ask yourself, why would you want to do that? But maybe you do have a specific reason. Maybe for some reason this does have to be a mezzo forte in the part, but not in the score. A lot of other things are, are difficult to do with link parts like um, uh, you know independent time signatures where the bar lines don't line up. Um, it's it's totally possible with linked parts. It's just really tricky. Doing it with extracted parts can be uh, a little bit quicker. Again, you just have to understand that now when you make updates, it's not gonna update between the files. So again, you just have to kind of, you know, you just have to weigh your options when it comes to that. The other advantage to doing it like this, and this may be the primary advantage of extracting parts uh, for a select few <laughs> uh, institutions, is that when you have separate files, now you can have multiple people working on these files uh, individually. So if you think about it, with your linked score and all of your linked parts, if your task was to take the linked parts and clean everything up, avoid all the collisions, lay everything out, do all the work that, that's necessary to make these parts presentable to your musicians, right? You would have to do those one at a time because every single part exists in this one file and obviously one file cannot be opened by more than one person at a time, right? If you extract your parts, now all of a sudden you have 12 separate files. So if you have 12 copyists, you could actually give each of them one file to fix, right? And so if it takes you 10 minutes to clean up a single part in a linked file document, imagine 10 minutes times 12 parts, that's two hours, right? But in a situation where you have 12 different people, it will only take them 10 minutes total because each of them will take 10 minutes simultaneously to do all 12 of these files. So in some cases, in some situations, if you have the luxury of having a team that large, extracting parts can actually be incredibly fast. So you can turn around scores really, really quickly with a large team uh, if you're using extracted parts. Obviously, that you can't do that with linked parts because only one person can have this file open at a time. 
But anyway, so that's it. That's extracted parts. Like I said, 99% of the time, I think you really want to use linked parts. It's just going to be so much easier for us mere mortals that are working by ourselves or even, even just a team of two or three. Uh, linked parts is so much safer. Everything's linked together. Changes don't have to be made in two different places, blah, blah, blah. But for the occasional situation where you really need to do something where linking the parts makes it kind of very difficult to, to make uh, specific changes between the scoring parts. Um, or if you have a large team of copyists, sometimes extracting parts uh, can be useful. Um, so yeah, so that's it. That's extracting parts in Finale. This is the old way that we used to do this, if you can believe that. And um, yeah, it's still viable. It's still a viable option. And uh, sometimes it's it's worth doing. So there you go. That's extracted parts. Uh, I hope this has helped. Once again, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. And as always, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. It, must, it would be most appreciated. And I will see you soon on the next video.